What is up guys, AshBFC here, and well, here we go again. Third year in a row now, my top 10 games of the year. Bigger shocker, EA were not the worst video game company of the year. The impossible has happened. Isn't this one of the signs of the apocalypse? But no, they weren't the worst. That goes to Ubisoft. What the hell happened to Ubisoft? What a shocker they've had this year. Terrible. Okay, so we're first at number 10, and yes, I've just slagged them off, and I do hate them, and I would happily watch them die a slow, painful death, but Ubisoft did get one thing right this year, and that's Far Cry 4. Yeah, Far Cry 4 is a great game. Actually worked. No missing faces, no falling through the floor. But yeah, Far Cry 4, great game, absolute ton of fun. I mean, yeah, very similar to Far Cry 3, you know, reused a lot of assets. Uh, it doesn't feel as fresh as Far Cry 3, but I loved Far Cry 3, so I was happy for a bit more. And they have improved in spite of it, the world looks awesome. There's so much, you know, fun, so many hours to have just, you know, mucking around, driving off cliffs, hunting animals, being chased by a freaking rhino, you know, riding the goddamn elephant, which is awesome. You know, just capturing the outpost and stuff, whether you're doing it stealthily or blowing shit up, going mental, you know, flying a little helicopter around, it's a hell of a lot of fun. You know, Pagan Min, really good villain. Um, as usual, shit story from Ubisoft, because I think they've just got children writing their stories now. They're absolutely terrible. Ubisoft desperately needs some new writers. But to be honest, I think <laughs> terrible stories isn't really the main problem right now with Ubisoft, is it? And yeah, it does use the Ubisoft formula, climb the tower, unlock the map, do the missions, but I'll be honest, it is actually much more fun in Far Cry than it is in Assassin's Creed. Best I don't get started on Assassin's Creed. But no, Far Cry 4, great game. Number 9, one of the biggest surprises, at least for me this year, we actually got a good alien game. Not just a good one, a great one. Alien Isolation. Yes, Creative Assembly nailed it. I mean... The history of Alien games has been pretty, pretty bad. I mean, Alien Clone Marines. Still gives me nightmares. And I made the mistake of buying that game on PC. So it's forever stuck in my Steam library. So whenever I open up my library, boom! A reminder of the horror. But Alien Isolation is almost enough, almost enough, to help us forget about that disaster of a game. Because it's fantastic. I love the direction they took. You know, they could have gone with another generic shooter, there's the a ton of ammo below the xenomorphs away. Boring, no, I love the fact they went with horror. And, it, you know, it's alien, not aliens. It's a throwback to the original film, and the best, in my opinion. But, oh, it's fantastic. I mean, I can't remember the last time a game created so much anxiety for me and just, you know, had my heart racing. It really did, it was incredible, it was so intense. I mean, I love the fact that, you know, you're being hunted, the odds are against you, it's got a fantastic atmosphere and the sounds as well when you think you hear the alien in the vents and you're thinking, oh god, please don't drop down now, and then when it does drop down, you're out in the open and you hide under a desk, you're in a corner praying it doesn't spot you, and then that moment when it does spot you, and you shit your pants. Fantastic. Brilliant. I think it's the best alien game ever. IGN 5.9 Mediocre. <laughs> Anyway, Alien Isolation, fantastic. Sequel, please. Number eight, my favorite shooter of the year, the granddaddy of shooters is back with a vengeance. It's Wolfenstein The New Order. Oh yeah, this game is exactly what I wanted from Wolfenstein because it is Wolfenstein. It's proper old school shooter. Forget about that pile of shit from 2009. It's just forget about that. Wolfenstein The New Order, brilliant. As I said, proper old school, you know. And this game shows we can still have awesome single player only first person shooters. No multiplayer. Good. Didn't need it. Okay, not every game needs multiplayer tacked on. We can still have great single player games. This game shows it. Great story, you know, great levels. It's pretty dark, pretty violent. You know, we're blowing away Nazis. Who doesn't like blowing away Nazis? Well, I guess Nazis, but screw them. You know. <laughs> It's just, oh, I loved it. I loved every second of this game. As I said, it was exactly what I wanted. It's proper Wolfenstein. I think, put Nostalgia aside, I know Wolfenstein 3D was one of the shoes that paved the way for the FPS genre. Nostalgia aside, I think this might be the best Wolfenstein. Machine Games did an absolutely outstanding job. And uh, I'd love for them to do a sequel. And not a single fucking quick time event to be found. Not a single one. 
So thank you Machine Games for being one of the few developers who doesn't put quick time events in the games. Thank you. Number 7. The 8th entry in the Mario Kart series. Well, Mario Kart 8. Yeah, I mean, it's Mario Kart. I don't need to say much about it. It's been around for a long time now. I've been playing it since the beginning, since I was a little kid. I've always loved Mario Kart. It's always been fantastic. Every single game that comes out never lets me down. This one's no exception. In fact, I think this is one of the best ones. It's absolutely brilliant. Just, It's just pure fun. That's the best way to describe Mario Kart. And it's just fun. It's just so much fun. You know, I love it. Always have done, probably always will do. And, you know, graphics look better than ever. You know, it feels so smooth and awesome at 60 frames per second. Fantastic levels. I mean, it is a shame about battle mode and, you know, character selection could have been better. But it's still a fantastic game. And, yeah, brilliant. Mario Kart. And how long has Mario Kart been around now? When did it come out? 1992? 93? Yeah, there's been eight of them since then. One on each system. How many Assassin's Creed games have we got now? Yeah. Number six. Not just the funniest game I've played this year, but I think the funniest game I've ever played in my entire life. It's got to be South Park the Stick of Truth, right? <laughs> oh, I've waited so long for a good South Park game, and I finally got one. You know, I've been a fan of South Park since the beginning, since it started in 1997, and we've had a few games over the years. They've tried the different genres, and they've all sucked the balls. We've had the kart racer, the first person game, the freaking quiz thing. They've all sucked. They got this one so right, because this is just, it's like playing just a big ass episode of South Park. It looks exactly like South Park and everything's in there. There's so much fan service and little items you find that reference all the way back to the very first season. And as I said, it's absolutely hilarious. It's just classic South Park humor. Matt and Trey written it. Doesn't hold back. The stuff that happens in this game is just mental. You just won't see in any other game. I mean, how many other games can you fling shit at your enemies? How many other games can you keep your enemies in the balls and watch them puke? How many games can you shrink down and fight the underpant gnomes under two people doing it doggy style? Huh? You go to an abortion clinic, fight some Nazi fetuses, you give Randy Marsh an abortion. Do I need to keep going? What more do you want from a video game? This game has it all. Oh, and you can play as a new class. So, you know, <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. I never laughed so much in my life playing a game. Absolutely brilliant. And for number 5, it's another Nintendo game, it's Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. This is the best 2D platform I've played since Donkey Kong Country 2 on the Super Nintendo. I think I said a similar thing about Rimmin Legends last year, but screw that game. Bah, that game's got nothing on this game. This game is amazing, it's just... It's just it's Donkey Kong, it's proper old school platformer, you know. I mean, they did a great job of returns, but this game shits on returns. It's amazing. Unbelievable level designs, great controls, it was great again to play as Cranky for the first time, you know, it was awesome they brought back the underwater levels, uh, amazing boss fights, proper boss fights, no checkpoints, you die, you go back to the beginning, bitch. That's how they should be, they go boss fights because they're meant to be hard. I mean, the game might be kid friendly in the fact that there's, you know, there's no bad language or violence, which would be quite weird, but it's definitely not kid friendly in the difficulty because it is freaking hard. I mean, Dog Gun's always been hard, but this is mega hard. If you want to go for those collectibles, even some levels just getting, you know, to the end, it's going to have you tear your goddamn hair out. It's, it'll drive kids insane. But the thing that makes it just that much more special, the music. They brought back David Wise. He used to work for Air back in the day. He used to compose their games. He composed the original, um, you know, Dog Gun Countries, which is, I think, the best video game music ever. And, oh. He just did an outstanding job with this. I mean, a lot of stuff was remixed. Massive Blast and Stone was awesome. You know, aquatic Ambience, um, you know, a lot of Joe Saga, Sticker Brush Symphony, Cage Wells Concert. Awesome, but most of it was brand new stuff. And it's just as good, I think, as his old stuff. Every track was amazing. Every track fits so perfect every level. Just absolutely incredible. And for number four, from the father of survival horror, it's the return of survival horror. It's the evil within. So goddamn glad to see Survival Horror back. Shinji Mikami totally delivered this game. He did not let me down. I knew he wouldn't. Fantastic game. Proper survival horror. Fantastic atmosphere. You know, it's challenging like Survival Horror should be. Great boss fights. Great story. Ridiculous enemy designs. Like, seriously, this game has some of the freakiest looking enemy types I've ever seen. And, oh, Reborn Laura? What the hell? They are just ridiculous. Ridiculously awesome. But, I mean, one of the things that totally surprised me about this game, because I did keep myself in the dark, I kind of do that now in most games to avoid disappointment and, you know, just have a bit of surprise, but the blood and the gore, like, oh my god, this game is nasty. 
it is flat out nasty and I mean that in the best possible way it's awesome it's just so much blood wow it's one of the bloodiest games I've ever played it's just horrific but unfortunately a lot of people just don't get survival horror do they they just don't get it the number of people I've seen complain online going, oh, this game is bullshit. They don't give you any ammo. I'm supposed to shoot everything. You can keep dying. It's too hard. It sucks. Worst game ever. Welcome to survival horror, bitches. Anyway, for number three, it's another Nintendo game. I think, hands down, the best game on the Wii U and the best action game of the year. It's Bayonetta 2. Wow. Holy shit. I mean, it's Platinum Games, they're absolutely incredible, they just keep getting better with every game they do, and this is probably their best game, they're unbelievable, I mean, <laughs> Bayonetta 1 was amazing, but this game's even better, they're just, they're one of the best developers, their games are incredible, and this is just what they do best, it's just another fast-paced, mental, adrenaline fueled, crazy, chaotic, fucking nuts, insane game, it's just... It's amazing. Not a dull moment. It just never stops. The chaos never stops. Fantastic artwork. Great level design. Combat's awesome. Brilliant enemy designs. And the boss fights are just unbelievable. This is one of the best boss fights I've ever seen. That is, again, something else Platinum Games does better than anyone else. Just boss fights. They're incredible. You've just got to see these things to believe them. They are insane. And there's just a whole bunch of them. It's just absolutely amazing game. Okay, the stories a bit cheesy and all that great, but who gives a shit about the story when you've got such amazing gameplay and that's where Platinum Games shine through their gameplay. They're just amazing. And if you have a Wii U and you don't own this game or you've never played this game, then what are you doing? Go play Bayonetta 2, god damn it, it's incredible. It was weird because I kept forgetting I was playing on a Nintendo console because, you know, all the blood and the language and Bayonetta getting naked and stuff, I was like, holy shit, I'm on a Wii U here, Jesus, like, it was just weird, you don't really see that on Nintendo, it's just a massive shame that it was a Wii U exclusive, I mean, yeah, it's good for Nintendo to have an awesome game like this, it, you know, does away the fact that they just, they just do kiddies games, but, you know, the fact that it's on the Wii U means, you know, it's not the most popular console, it's just, it's not going to get the sales it deserves, I know a lot of people pissed off Nintendo that it's exclusive, but, they chose to fund it because, I mean, Sega owned the IP, they own, you know, Bayonetta, and they couldn't be arsed with it, could they? were like, oh, we're too busy raping Sonic and pissing on your childhood. So, you can't be too mad at Nintendo, but it is a shame, it is a shame that it was, you know, Wii U exclusive. But, oh well, still an absolutely incredible game. As I said, I think hands down, the best game on the Wii U. Amazing. And for number two, it's Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor. Yeah, this is a game that totally exceeded my expectations. I had a feeling it was going to be good. I said, ah, I think it's going to be a good game, but it turned out to be absolutely amazing. This is the real Assassin's Creed game this year. You taking notes, Ubisoft, you morons? This is how it's done. Just, oh, brilliant game. I um, loved every single second of it. Just so goddamn good. I mean, this is the Lord of the Rings game I think I've been waiting for. It is Lord of the Rings. Okay, I know it's not called Lord of the Rings, but it's Lord of the Rings. We've got Lord of the Rings. Whatever, I don't care. It's amazing, you know, it's, it's like Assassin's Creed and Batman in there. The combat's amazing, I've spent so much time just slaughtering enemies and I, God knows how many heads I took. I took so many heads, I love how brutal it is. You know, it was cool, you know, just going in there like a madman, swinging like crazy and it was, you know, fun doing the stealth stuff. Big open world, lots of stuff to do. You know, decent amount of hours to get in there. A great story, great graphics and, um, and definitely, I think the standout feature of the game, you know, was the Nemesis system, which was absolutely brilliant. I'd, I'd love to see the Nemesis system just, you know, improve upon in the future. Because, I mean, it was a cross-gen game. It came out on PS3 and Xbox 360, so I guess it was kind of being held back. So I'd love to see another game in this series, but, you know, current-gen only, and they can just totally improve on it. Bigger world, expand the Nemesis system, could be even more amazing. But, yeah, absolutely incredible game. Oh, well, here we go. Number one. My favourite game of the year, <laughs> another huge shocker, did not see this coming, but it's my favourite game of the year. Yeah. 
Dragon Age Inquisition. I, I am stunned. I just did not expect this. I mean, my favorite game of the year is from Electronic Arts. It's madness. It doesn't make any sense. This is meant to happen. What are you doing here? But the fact is, Dragon Age Inquisition is amazing. It's amazing. I expected nothing from this game. I mean, it's EA. No one hates EA more than I do. You know, they're a terrible company. I don't need to tell you that. Everyone knows that. You know, you'd be stupid not to be pessimistic about their games. You know, twice for the worst company in America. And, you know, Dragon Age 2. <laughs> you know, I mean, I loved Origins. Origins were one of my favorite games of last year. I think it's one of Bioware's best games. But Dragon Age 2, what happened? One of the most disappointing games I've ever played in my entire life. So I expected nothing from this game, and it's just blown me away. I even beat I even beat the game. I'm like what? Twenty five hours in, if that. I barely scratch the surface. I'm loving every second of it. It's just got me hooked like no other game has this year. It's it's huge. You totally get your money's worth. It's a massive world. The world looks amazing. There's so many quests. I've been overwhelmed with just how many quests there are. You know, I just want to see everything. I want to read every little note. I want to find every item. I want to do every goddamn quest. I've just got completely addicted to the game. It's just sucked me in like no other game has done this year. I just so happy that Dragon Age is back. It's back. And oh, it's this oh, it's brilliant. It's just fantastic. And I'm so happy. I'm so happy the way this game turned out and so shocked that EA were the publisher. I can't get that can't get my head around that. It's, <laughs> it really is. It's a phenomenal game and I've still got it's probably gonna take about another month or even longer to beat it. I mean I've still got more to do. I haven't finished it, but so much better. And Dragon Age 2 so much better. And the tactical camera's back, you know, it's just amazing. I can't stop playing it. I'm absolutely loving it. Just can't believe it turned out to be my favorite game of the year. I, I probably thought it could end up being one of the worst games of the year, but no! You see, this just shows EA can do good things when they want. They just choose not to, they choose to be scum. I mean, they have the talent at the development studios, and they sure as hell have the money. They just prefer to be scumbags and fuck everybody over. So, but hell, hats off to EA and Bioware. I mean, I'm giving all EA all the credit here. Bioware made the damn game, but obviously EA, you know, kept the freaking noses out. But yeah, great resolution. My favorite game of the year. Absolutely amazing. And I'm gonna go play it after this video. So that was my top 10 games of 2014. Feel free to hate me for sharing my opinion. Feel free to let me know what your free games were this year. But either way, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you later.